In search engine optimization, schema is a way to organize data so that search engines understand the content better. It gains importance as search evolves into different devices and forms, like voice search. Using schema markup creates rich snippets, which are more detailed results that bring information directly to the search engine result pages. Hi, I'm Kate, and in this video we will insert how to schema into content to increase the chances of you ranking higher in search result pages. We will cover some ground rules, then cover two ways of adding how to schema to your content. First, the how to block in the Gutenberg editor, and second, Rank Math Pro's schema generator, which you can use in any page editor. Click on the timestamps in the description to jump to the one you prefer and to frequently asked questions. Let's clarify some guidelines for the use of this schema type. You should not be using how to schema for anything that violates Google's guidelines. This includes hate speech, sexually explicit content, profanity, illegal activities, promoting dangerous or violent content, or harassment. Do not use how-to schema to advertise products and services like you would in articles, blog content, or opinionated content. If you want to talk about a product, stick to direct step-by-step -step instructions of something that can be done with that product. Any content on the page besides the how-to, such as an introduction, conclusions, or personal experiences, need to be outside of the how-to block or schema. While the how-to schema can be just a part of a page's content, we recommend that the page itself be specific to what the how-to guide is about. Do not include a how-to section on a page about a general topic. All the steps for the how-to guide should be present in the same page. If it's distributed over multiple pages, Google may not consider your website for rich results. How-to schema is not meant to be used for recipes. There is recipe structured data, specific for that use, which is natively supported by all Rank Math versions, including the free version. Last but not least, do not add more than one how-to block to the same page. Before we start, you'll need to ensure that Rank Math schema module is active. Click on Rank Math in the sidebar of your WordPress admin panel. In Rank Math's dashboard, click on Advanced Mode on the top right. Then, scroll down to the Schema or Structured Data module and click the toggle to enable it. To use Rank Math's How To block, open the post in Gutenberg. You can click on the plus sign on the top left corner of the screen, or on the plus sign at the end of the line, or press the forward slash key and type How To. You can start by adding what's called the final image because it represents the final results of your how-to visually. This is optional but highly recommended because seeing the final results is a compelling motivation for users to read the steps. You can upload or select the image and use the two buttons on the top right to edit or delete it. Second is adding the main description, which should be about the main goal. There's no need to describe the steps as they will be presented in detail later. The third field, duration, is where you'll estimate how long it should take to go through all the steps. You can alter the text from total time to whatever you prefer. Use the fields on the right to add days, hours, or minutes. This is optional and deactivated by default. These options are available for all Rank Math users, but the Plugins Pro version has additional features. The first of them, Estimated Cost, has two fields. On the left, you will enter a currency. We recommend using the ISO 4217 standard. You can learn more about it through the link in the description. In the field to the right, you can type an amount or adjust it with the upwards and downwards arrows. Now let's talk about the supply, tools, and material fields, which correspond to properties in schema that might seem to overlap. Supply and tools are sub-properties of instrument, which would include all the objects used in that tutorial. The difference is that supplies are consumed or modified, for instance, wood panels or yards of fabric, including how much of it will be used. On the other hand, tools are not consumed and end up in the same way as they were before, like a hammer or a pair of scissors. Finally, material is where you can list what the supplies are made of, for example cotton, MDF, or stainless steel. You can fill out these three fields with text, but material also takes URLs. In all three, you should list an item per line. Next up, it's time to add the steps. Each one has three parts, the title, image, and description. Don't describe the step in the title, just use a few words to say what you're going to do. In the description, list all of the details, in a way that people listening to it are able to follow along to increase your chances of ranking higher in voice search. Last but not least is the step image. We recommend adding one to each step as long as they're different images. It's better to have no image in a step than to repeat. You can change the selected image by clicking on the pencil icon on the top right corner. There are three options regarding steps. You can click on the button with an eye to hide it, which means just disabling the step temporarily. Or you can click on the trash can icon to delete it, which will permanently remove the step. Then you can add more steps on the button right below it. When you finish adding all the steps, it's time to customize the block. Let's start with the how-to options, which define the HTML code that structure the elements. 
In list style, you choose if the list of steps is presented as an ordered list with numbers, an unordered list of topics, or not a list at all. Title Wrapper defines how the step titles are displayed. They can be headings from H2 to H6, or use the plain paragraph and div tags. There are also two options related to images. Main Image Size lets you pick the size of what we call Final Image, while Image Size lets you pick the size of the images for the steps. For both, you can choose between Thumbnail, Medium, Large, and Full Size. Then come the styling options, where you can enter the CSS classes that will be applied to the steps title and descriptions, as well as to the list containing the complete how-to. After all the steps are complete, we recommend testing if the schema is functional with Google's Rich Results test page. We left a link to it in the description. If your URL is already live, you can just enter the URL and click on Test Code. If the page still hasn't been published, open a preview of the post by clicking on the top right corner. In the front-end version of the post, click the right button on your mouse to open the options and select View Page Source. You can use the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl A to select all of the text, or Command A if you're on a Mac. Copy the text by pressing Ctrl C or Command C on a Mac. On the test page, paste the code, whether by clicking the right button on the text area or with the shortcut Ctrl V or Command V. And finally, click on Test Code. You will find out if your page is eligible for rich results and see examples of what the results could look like if Google determines that the content is appropriate for rich results for that particular query. The second way to insert how-to schema is using Rank Math Pro's Schema Generator. Access Rank Math's meta box in your page editor of choice. Open the Schema tab and click on Schema Generator. A pop-up will open with a list. Select How-to, which is one of the schema options exclusive for Rank Math Pro. The Schema Builder will open with the properties and property groups for you to fill out. The title and description fields have variables in them, which means they will automatically pull information from the meta tags that were set up in the general tab of Rank Math's meta box. But you can type a title specific for the how-to schema if you prefer. We'll skip the next field, shortcode, and come back to it later. The total time property is where you'll estimate how long it should take to go through all the steps, in days, hours, or minutes. It must be filled in the ISO 8601 format. There's a link in the description where you can learn how it works. The image URL should show the final result of the tutorial. This field automatically uses the post's thumbnail or featured image that you add in the post settings. You can add a specific image by uploading it to your media library and copying the URL to paste in this field. Next is the cost property, with the total estimated amount to complete the project. You have to insert the currency in the ISO 4217 standard, which you can check out in the link that's in the description. The following three property groups are supplies, tools, and material, which may seem to overlap, so let's specify what each one is. Supplies and tools are sub-properties of instrument, which would include all the objects used in that tutorial. The difference is that supplies are consumed or modified during the process. For instance, wood panels or yards of fabric, including how much of it will be used. On the other hand, tools are not consumed and end up in the same way as they were before, like a hammer or a pair of scissors. Finally, material is where you can list what the supplies are made of, for example, cotton, MDF, or stainless steel. You can fill out material with text or URLs. In Supplies and Tools, you'll need to click on Add Property Group to add each item in a separate field. The final property group is Steps. For each step, you'll add a group with four properties. The name should just summarize that step in a few words, without any details. The URL property isn't available in the Gutenberg block. Here, you can add a relative anchor to compose the link that will take the visitor straight to that part of the page. For image URL, you can upload an image to your media library and copy the URL to paste on this field. If you don't have images specific for each step, it's better to not add images at all than to repeat the same image in different steps. Description lists all of the details in that step. We recommend writing it in a way that people listening to it would be able to follow along because it increases your chances to rank higher in voice search. To add new steps, click on Add Property Group. Once all the steps are there, you can check the results by clicking on Code Validation on the top of the pop-up. This will change to a tab with the code related to that schema. Click on Test with Google to go straight to Google's Rich Results test page. You could also copy the code to test with other devices. In the test page, click on Test Code. You will find out if your content is eligible for rich results and what the results could look like if Google determines that the content is appropriate for rich results for that particular query. Now that you know your code is valid, it's time to copy the shortcode and save the schema for that post. Then, paste the shortcode in the main text area and save the draft or update the post. Now let's cover two frequently asked questions. The first is how long after adding how to schema your posts will appear in search results. Since it's up to Google to include your website in the search results, 
there is no way to predict a deadline, or even if the rich snippets will rank at all. The second is if there's something wrong because you can only find the rich results in mobile devices. Currently, how-to rich results are not available on desktop. They are limited to mobile results. If this tutorial helped you, give it a like. If you have any questions, click on the link in the description to open a free support ticket. You can find more tutorials in our knowledge base at rankmath.com kb.